My name is Devin Marble with Pima Community College and the Paramedic Program, and welcome to your virtual reality lesson on AV blocks. Okay, we're going to go right up to the first degree block. Okay, but I want to see inside of the heart and see what's happening. So we're going to go inside the heart. Let's bring up the ECG as well. Okay, this is going to be, this waveform is computer generated, so it's not going to look this perfect on a real individual, but for this lesson, it should be okay. This is your first degree block. A couple of things that we want to note. A first degree AV block is not actually a true block. It's just a delay in conduction. And the reason why it's not a true block is because it doesn't actually ever block the ventricular beat. It only delays it. Now in our other blocks, the second degree type one, type two, and third degree, you'll see that there's a complete drop of a QRS complex or a complete block of a ventricular beat. So a first degree is more of like a first degree delay, not necessarily a first degree block, even though there's still an issue with the AV node. Another thing about first degrees is that oftentimes people don't even know they have them. And the reason is because it's a regular rhythm, meaning that the QRS complexes march out at a regular rhythm and rate. That means there's no drop in ventricular beat and there's no irregularity in the ventricular beat. Now, sometimes people feel like their heart skips a beat uh, maybe they have too much caffeine and you get a palpitation. That's different than a first degree. Because in a first degree, your ventricles don't skip beats. Everything marches out normally. The only difference is that the PR interval on your ECG is greater than 0 0.2 or greater than 1 box. Each P wave has a QRS that follows it. What does that look like in the conduction? Okay. Now we're looking at this at 9% speed. So at full speed, it's really hard to tell that there's a delay at all. You have your atriums conducting, and it looks like the ventricles conduct right after it, because what we're talking about is milliseconds here. Very, very short amount of time, but the heart can tell the difference, usually. First degree blocks are pretty simple. Usually, a first degree block is asymptomatic. Okay, so in slow motion, we can see here, you have your SA node, AV node conduction, there's a little break, a pause, and then, you have your ventricular beat. This pause right here shouldn't happen. It should flow right through. So let's look at a normal sinus beat. This is normal sinus rhythm at the same, here's 20%. Watch it flow, okay? You have beat flow right through. So that first degree AV block is right here at the AV node, and there's a slight delay, okay? As you can see, we're gonna have a conduction in your atrium slight delay, and then your ventricular beat. So that's a first degree block, guys. It's really uh, very straightforward. Let's move on. As we take a look at our second degree type one and second degree type two blocks, an interesting fact is that a common cause of these blocks in the patient is certain types of MIs or myocardial infarctions or heart attacks. So oftentimes these people have a history. Additionally, a second degree type one and a second degree type two are irregular in the ventricular beats. They drop a QRS complex, which means the patient will feel it. It is irregular. Their ventricles are not beating at a normal, regular rhythm. They are dropping a beat, so they might feel a palpitation. Second degree type one block. A lot of people call this the Winkenbach, right? It walks away. I personally don't like to call it the Winkenbach. <laughs> um, because that doesn't help me memorize it. The fact that it walks away does help me memorize it a little bit, but the way that I like to look at these is that these are in order of severity. So your, your second degree type one block is not as bad as the second degree type two block, okay? Now we're gonna see that in a second because what you can see here is that the PR interval is getting longer and longer and longer. Let's slow this down a little bit, okay? We're gonna slow the cycle speed down, okay? so. You have a P, Q, R, S, T. Then you have a P and it's a little bit longer, Q, R, S, T, P. It's getting farther away, it's getting farther away, and then a P and it's gonna drop a Q, R, S. There should be a Q, R, S complex right here, okay? Now, the reason why this isn't quite as bad as a second degree type two is because a second degree type two, it doesn't walk away. It's not like progressively getting worse and then dropping a Q, R, S. The second degree type two just drops Q, R, S out of nowhere with zero delay, zero conduction. So that's getting much worse, that's not good. But let's look at what the second degree type one looks like, okay? So 
we have your beat, a little delay, and then it conducts in the bundle of his and the bundle branches. Then a beat, a longer delay, and then it's going to conduct, and then a beat, and it's going to completely skip the ventricular beat. So here we're starting over here as a beat, and here we go, another one, beat, long delay, conduction, and then it's going to skip a beat here, beat, and this should have a, we should have a ventricular beat right here. Now this is called an AV block, right, which means that our SA node is continuing to send beats, and the AV node is blocking, is blocked in some way, okay. With the second degree type 1, you can see that the conduction from the SA node down to the AV node is not exact. Let's get a little closer here, okay. You can see that the conduction comes down, and it is blocked and delayed right here in the center, and we miss a beat. This should have conducted. So we have another conduction that comes down, and then there's a slight delay, and it conducts. We get another conduction from the SA node to the AV node, slight delay, and it conducts. This is going to be a little bit longer, delay, and then it conducts. And now we're going to get a conduction and a missed beat. That is your second degree, type 1. It walks away. The PR interval gets longer and longer, or the heart is getting sicker and sicker until it drops a beat and skips a ventricular beat. Now, I want you guys all to note the reason why this is so important is because your ventricles are what send the blood out to the rest of the body, right? This is the blood is going to go out to the rest of the body here. So if our ventricles skip a beat, our body misses a beat of good oxygenated blood. Atrial beats are good because we need to preload the heart, but atrial beats do not perfuse the rest of the body. We need these ventricles to conduct. Let's look at a second degree type 2. Okay, here's a second degree type 2 block, okay? Let's look at the ECG alongside the heart, and you can see you have a beat, QRS, P, Q. Now, this second degree type 2 is computer generated, and it is perfect, okay? The second degree type 2s you see in the field are not going to be this perfect or that you might see on a test. But just for this educational purpose, we'll slow this down a little bit, okay? We're going to see a P, Q, R, S, T, a P, and a missed beat. So in a second degree type 2, you will have more P waves that don't have a QRS associated with them than in a second degree type 1. In a second de degree type 1, a good chunk of your strip is going to have a P wave associated with a QRS, and then eventually one will get too far away, and you'll miss one. You will skip a QRS, so this P wave doesn't have a QRS associated with it. But then the other beats do, they're just getting delayed. Your second degree type 2, in this strip, every other beat is missing a QRS for the purposes of education. But in reality, you're just going to have more P waves that do not have a QRS associated with them. All right? It's not going to be walking away, you're not going to have, this one's a little bit longer, then this one's a little bit longer. There's a complete conduction block happening often in this okay it's not walking away the atrium and the ventricles think everything is normal and then it does not communicate a conduction down to the ventricles for seemingly no reason and that is scary that's why this heart is sicker so let's let's see what that looks like okay sa node conducts down to the av no block comes through and you get some blood perfusing the body nice we have an sa node conduction blocked right at the av zero conduction that is a second degree type 2. There's no walking away. It's not getting more delayed. For seemingly no reason, we had a sudden block, and this isn't conducting. Our heart is not perfusing, which means your atrial rate in this ECG is twice the ventricular rate. But what matters to us as paramedics is our ventricular rate. And in this one, we're looking at a ventricular rate of 38, which is very bradycardic. Let's stand back. You might look at this heart and think to yourself, oh, look at how many beats we have. Bam, bam, bam. We've got lots of beats happening here, but that's not perfusing. Your atrium's not perfusing your body. Your ventricles are. So we have one, two, three. That's a slow pulse, guys. Four, five. This is an unhealthy person. Let's see what a third degree block looks like. A third degree heart block is a complete heart block. Okay, there is a complete dissociation between the rhythm of the atrium and the rhythm of the ventricles. It's almost like the atriums are listening to rock and roll and the ventricles are listening to the blues. The atriums are doing their own thing. So you'll notice that the P waves are all marching out at an equal distance apart. 
seemingly not associated with any QRS complex, and we'll talk about that in detail in a minute. Additionally, the R waves of the QRS complexes are also equal distance apart and marching out. So they're on their own rhythm, which means that this person is living at a ventricular beat, a ventricular pace, not at the atrial pace. So we are going to have many more P waves than we have QRS is associated with them in this. And there's going to be no rhyme or reason. You're going to be able to march out your P waves. They're all going to be the same space apart. And it's going to look like, oh, I've got all these marching out P waves. They're all three boxes or four boxes apart. This is wonderful. Then you're going to have your ventricular rate. And you stand back and you look at this ECG. And you don't have that many QRS complexes in your strip. And you realize that the P waves are not causing the conduction in your ventricles. It's almost as though your SA node fires down to the AV node. There's a complete block. Then the AV node decides, you know what, I'm going to fire on my own because I'm not receiving any more information from upstairs and I need to keep the person alive. So it fires, nothing, AV node takes over and fires for you. So this is a bradycardic individual. This also means that if you treat the atrium, you're not helping the situation. Because if you just increase the rate of the atrium, you just increase the rate by giving something like atropine, all you're doing is increasing the beating of the top half of the heart and the bottom half of the heart is still continuing on at a third the pace in this scenario. So look at how many beats we have in the atrium. Let's just look at this for a second. You see that? Now look here at the ventricles. This person needs treatment. This person is bradycardic. Okay, now let's go back to this ECG. I'm not a real fan of this computer-generated rendering of the ECG, but it should give us an idea. Let's slow this down. So here is the problem with this QRS strip. It's computer-generated, so it's perfect. In real life, you're going to see a P wave, a QRS, and then you're going to see a misshapen T wave or a T wave that has two bumps in it because it's actually a T and a P on top of each other. And then another P wave. And then another P wave. And then another misshapen T wave. And what you need to do is you need to march out your P waves and they're all going to be the same distance apart. And if it looks like a P wave should land right here, but instead you have this weird misshapen T wave, that's actually a P wave underneath the T wave. The P's are marching out. And the QRS complexes are happening on their own. As kind of represented here, you have a P, slight space. This looks like a normal beat, right? This looks like a normal sinus beat. But then here, it's tighter, it's closer. P, Q, R, S, T. Well, that doesn't make any sense. And what about this here? There's a, a P in the middle, and there should be a QRS complex here, right? How come there's no QRS complex here? So P, Q, R, S, T, P, Q, R. Well, there should be something here. There's no rhyme or reason to this. This is actually P, Q, R, S, misshapen T wave because there's a T there's a there's a P wave underneath it an atrial beat underneath the refilling of the heart a P wave a PQRST a T that is misshapen because there's an atrial beat underneath the refilling of the heart and then it continues and the space between the P the P there should be a P under here somewhere a P there's a P wave right there it doesn't make any sense. You're seeing the readout in the ECG because there is electrical conduction, and that is all this is giving you. Let's talk about one thing really quick. This ECG is giving you a readout only of the electrical conduction, and only when you palpate a pulse can you tell which one of these QRS complexes, if any of them or all of them, are perfusing the body at all, which means what we are reading in this ECG is this the yellow conduction from the SA node down to the AV node to the bundle of his, and then the T wave refilling the heart. That is what we are reading on the ECG readout. And this is important because you can't just treat the monitor on any of these AV blocks. You have to palpate a pulse and see what you feel. That's how you know what's perfusing. That's how you know if your red oxygenated blood cells are going out to the rest of the body. All right, guys, we're going to stand back. We're going to go through these one last time. I'm just going to show them to you, and I'm not going to slow things down, okay? So here we go. Sinus rhythm. Let's do this. There's sinus rhythm in the heart. 
sinus rhythm. Everything is very smooth. The SA node fires down to the AV node nice and smooth through to the bundle of his, and we get perfusion at a nice rate of 75. Let's look at a first degree block. The only thing you can tell is right here, there's a slight delay. This should have been smoother. That yellow conduction should pass right through the AV node slick, but it's not. It's slightly delayed. Second degree type one, getting worse. Watch this conduction. We're, these are AV blocks. This is where we're looking, folks. We're looking at the AV node. This is that second degree type one. This is the one that walks away, right? Okay. The delay is getting longer and longer, and then we miss a beat. Second degree type two, getting worse. Everything seems fine until it just does not conduct at all. We're looking right here, folks. Decent conduction, no conduction. Again, this is a computer readout. Your patient's going to look a little bit different, but the principles are there. The P wave does not conduct a QRS complex for seemingly no reason. It's not walking away. It's, you can't tell that it's starting to get farther apart in the second degree type 2. It just drops a QRS complex. Third degree. This looks like a tachycardic rhythm. But look at the conduction. This is where we're looking, folks, right here at the AV node. These are AV blocks, and this is a complete hard block. Your atriums are hammering the AV node with what they're trying to call a regular sinus beat. But there's a complete block. There's just no communication, and the ventricles are doing their own thing. They're beating at their own pace, trying to keep this patient alive. All right, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed your virtual reality lesson on AV blocks. Let us know if you enjoyed this. If you want to see more like this, maybe different organs, we can do lungs, we can do the pancreas. Let us know. My name is Devin Marble with Pima Community College and the Paramedic Program. Subscribe to Pima Paramedic's YouTube channel, comment below, and we will see you guys soon. Also, thank you to ShareCareVR for making this application free to download. In the meantime, we'll see you on the next VR lesson.